We've got some sad news to start out with. Darren Drozdov passed away on Friday morning at the age of 54 from what his family said was natural causes. And I was very sad to hear that. WWE released a statement that read, WWE is saddened to learn that Darren Drozdov passed away on Friday at age 54. An imposing force in the ring, he became a notable figure in WWE, known to fans as both Puke and Draz during, what, what a name, and Draz during his time as an in-ring competitor. Drozdov was gifted, uh, a gifted athlete, before coming to WWE, playing football at the University of Maryland before stints in the NFL with the New York Jets, Philadelphia Eagles, and Denver Broncos. He captivated audiences in the late 90s with his time spent in the Legion of Doom, teaming with Animal, and his Draz's World vignettes. WWE extends its condolences to Darren Drozdov's family, friends, and fans. In a statement from his family, they said, We are sad to share our beloved Darren passed away this morning of natural causes. There are no words to convey the deep sense of loss and sadness we are feeling right now. Uh, Darren, affectionately known as Draws, was involved in a tragic accident, uh, in-ring accident, while wrestling for the WWE in 1999 that rendered him a quadriplegic. Nevertheless, Draws maintained a championship mindset and lived every day to the fullest, even though he was unable to move from the neck down for the past 24 years. His own words sum up his relentless positivity in the midst of adversity. There is always another day. Just because I'm paralyzed and stuck in a wheelchair doesn't mean my life is over. I've, le I've learned to live again and my life is far from over. We lived this journey with him over the past 24 years. We were always there through the good times and the bad and provided him with our unconditional love. We would like to extend our deepest appreciation to everyone all of his fans, teammates, colleagues, and friends for all the love and support he received over the years. You all gave him meaning, purpose, and something to live for. He loved each and every one of you and cherished the conversations, notes, and letters that he received. His faith in humanity never faltered, so know that for all the love you've shown him, uh, he loved you back. And they went on to thank WWE for their support uh, as well. Uh, it's a very, very nice uh, note that they posted. There are two things that most people will remember Draws for. One is the Beyond the Mat documentary scene with Vince McMahon, where he pukes on command. Not, not Vince, but Draws pukes on command. And you get that shot of Vince going, he's got to puke, he's got to puke, right? It's a famous scene from the documentary. That's something he was doing even before he came to WWE. He was doing that in the NFL. It was his his gift, or his curse, I guess maybe you would say. Uh, so WWE called him Puke, and they used it as part of his character. They paired him up with the Legion of Doom, with the storyline being that he was trying to kind of edge Hawk out of the team. He was enabling Hawk's problems with alcohol, which led to this tasteless angle where Hawk would come out to the ring, he would be drunk, and he was stumbling all over the place. And one night, he climbed to the top of the Titantron, while everybody begged him, animals down below, all the referees and officials, don't do it, don't do it, they thought he was going to jump, or, you know, do something stupid. And so Draz scales the Titantron, and it looks like he's trying to talk him down, but then he ends up shoving him backwards. Uh, you know, was it intentional? Was it an accident? That was kind of the story. And so not long after this, they changed course. The LOD stuff didn't last long. They paired him off with Matt Bloom when, when Bloom came in doing the Prince Albert gimmick. So the gimmick was that he was Draz's personal body piercer. And they made them a duo. Besides the Beyond the Mat scene, the other thing, unfortunately, that Draz is most remembered for is the injury that ended his career and, and paralyzed him. And it was at a SmackDown taping in 1999. It was at the Nassau Coliseum. It was right here in New York. You know, and back then I attended a lot of Raws and a couple of SmackDowns at Nassau. Uh, but I was not at that show, thankfully. But there was a match taped between Draws and D'Lo Brown. And because it was a taped show, it never aired. The only footage what we have ever seen from not even the match, the post-match or or anything that happened involving you know draws on that show, 
was the footage of him being stretchered from the ring that they used for years as part of those old Don't Try This at Home videos. They used to air those all the time. Uh, that's the only footage that has ever been released. And, you know, it, it was a day like any other. And Blue Meanie was there that night. He's told the story. He's talked about Draws and D'Lo. Uh, not that they were best friends or anything, but, like, during the day at the show, they were hanging out most of the day. I think D'Lo brought his PlayStation or something, and so they're playing video games. I think he said it was some kind of car game they were playing. Uh, and that's what they were doing, hanging out in the back before the show. And then it was match time. And it was during a powerbomb attempt. D'Lo did this move. I think it was like a running sky high. Where he gets the guy up, he takes a few steps like a, like a running powerbomb. And he did that in most of his matches. And D'Lo went to go pick him up for the powerbomb and something went wrong. I think it was on the pickup. It wasn't like he picked him up and then while he was running, he tripped or he slipped or some fan threw something in the ring. D'Lo has, uh, for years in like shoot interviews, he's dispelled that. He didn't trip. He didn't slip. It wasn't anything like that. I think it was on the pickup. Something just went wrong uh, in the spot. And when he landed, Draws broke his neck and he was paralyzed instantly. And, you know, the man was on a stretcher in the back Mick Foley talked about this in his book. You know, he's unable to move his limbs and he's he's laying there and he's telling D'Lo, like, don't blame yourself, it's not your fault. And over the years, Draz has said as much in interviews, you know, that he had no hard feelings whatsoever towards D'Lo because, you know, as he said, shit happens. And everyone who gets involved in athletics of some sort, he says, knows the risks involved. So Draz never held D'Lo responsible. He was always adamant about that. Although I know D'Lo has said that Draz's wife at the time, um, I think he was married to one of the company's, uh, well, I guess she would have been the seamstress. I think Julie was her name. So they were married, and I know she did have ill feelings. I think she blamed D'Lo for what happened, but Draz never did. There was never any issue between him and Draz. Uh, he did, now I I believe, I remember reading, he did eventually regain some very limited movement. I know in the, the statement the family put out, they basically just said he was paralyzed from the neck down for the past 24 years. I thought he did eventually regain some limited movement in his upper body or his arms. Um, maybe that's not the case, but I know he never he never did walk again. Uh, the founder of Under Armour was actually a college friend of his, and he helped design that customized... We, in so many photos, we see draws in this customized uh, wheelchair. So he was able to use that to travel and get around, and so the, the CEO of Under Armour is the one responsible for having that built and, and financed so that draws would be able to get around. Uh, after the accident, I know you know, WWE kept him on payroll. I know he did columns for WWE.com for a while. He would give pay-per-view predictions. Uh, they kept him on payroll for years. Uh, by all accounts, they took good care of him financially, at least as far as his medical expenses were concerned. And he was just a happy guy, you know, despite the horrible injury, the horrible uh, hand that was dealt to him and all the difficulties he had, battles with pneumonia, all sorts of horrible things he had to go through. He kept a very positive attitude. He would still attend wrestling conventions. You know, he would still get out there. He wasn't a hermit. Like, he didn't want to leave home or anything like that. Um, he was interviewed for the Brawl for All episode of Dark Side of the Ring. And he was on there cracking jokes. You know, his accident may be what most people remember him for. But he should also be remembered for how he responded to that accident. You know, the dude was a warrior. He was robbed of his career. He was robbed of ever being able to start a family. All the things he lost, and he didn't let it get him down. You know, he didn't let it stop him from living. It's just a shame he only had those 54 years.